Hey everybody and welcome back to Just a Mental Note. Today I'm going to be telling you about five of the signs that I probably should have noticed that my ex was cheating on me. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. My name is Devin and I make videos all about mental health and chronic illness. And toxic relationships really, really impact your mental health. I recently did a video, actually, I don't know how recent it was. I'll remember to leave the link in the description or up on one of the cards, whatever. But I recently told the whole story or at least an overview of the story of me being in an abusive relationship. This man, who I call Todd, it's not his actual name, but that's what we're calling him on this channel. He was very emotionally abusive. He was financially abusive and he cheated on me a lot. And now I never physically caught him. I never saw him with another woman. I never saw any of these texts or anything like that. But that I'll get into a little bit It's because I was not allowed to. However, I think it's pretty clear by even just these signs alone. And this is only five signs out of the almost five years that we were together. So these five signs make it very clear that he was cheating on me and he was cheating on me consistently. And I didn't listen to them. And I'm upset with myself about that. I didn't listen. I didn't listen to my friends, what they were telling me. I simply listened to him and his excuses. So what I want to do is tell you guys now what these warning signs are that I decided to completely ignore. So that way, hopefully you don't do the same thing. The first sign that I was being cheated on was definitely one I should not have ignored. It's pretty obvious. It's very in your face, but I did ignore it. So I wanted to mention it anyways. Todd was found on Tinder twice. I had my friend who was on Tinder find him. And then her friend who was on Tinder later on was swiping and still found him. His explanation was that him and his friends essentially use the app as like hot or not. He had friends who were in relationships who were on this app, which I mean, if you have friends in relationships that are on dating apps, maybe that's a sign that you are also doing some shady things. But anyways, he told me that him and his friends were on Tinder. So that way, this sounds even terrible. This sounds terrible with me saying it. So they could make fun of people. So they could send pictures of the weird girls back and forth. And again, just hearing that, I should have broke up with him. You're telling me that you literally downloaded a dating app just so that way you can make fun of how other people look. Like that's messed up. But for some reason, I believed him. I remember the first time this happened when my friend found him. She sent me a screenshot of his Tinder profile and was like, um, what's going on? I was at school at the time, so I actually called him multiple, multiple, multiple times and he did not pick up the phone. So at that point I was, I was mad. I was heated. I'm not going to lie. I mean, my boyfriend of years was just found on Tinder. So I called his mom because he's still living with his mom. We were still early twenties. So not abnormal to live with your parents, maybe even teenagers. It might've been before that, but I called his mom and she went to wake him up. And I remember him being so mad at me for calling his mom to wake him up. Like he thought that I had overstepped such a big boundary, even though I had known his mom for years. Like, I, I don't know, I don't know. I guess he immediately got mad because he got caught and he wanted to put it on something else. So he got mad at me for calling his mom, got mad at me for waking him up, got mad at me for bothering him with this BS. Like he literally went off on me because I was upset that he was found on Tinder and he just explained it away and I let him because I loved him and I wanted to be with him and I wanted to believe him. I wanted that relationship to work. I wanted to do everything I could to make it work. So if he was telling me something that wasn't the truth, but made it easier for me to stay with him and make that relationship work, I was going to take it. The second big sign I had that Todd was cheating on me was that I was not allowed to post about us on social media. He claimed to be a very private person and didn't want everybody in his business. Now I can understand that to an extent because in high school he was involved in a lot of drama, a lot of rumors. I mean, when you act like this, you do get involved in a lot of drama and a lot of rumors, but he was very much, I want everybody out of my life. I want it to just be you and me. And I want to be in this relationship with you. And I thought that was really sweet at first, but I am a very outwardly affectionate person. I like posting pictures of me and my significant other. I just, I like posting pictures and posting things about the people that I love. I am that way. And I remember there was one time I posted something and he 
immediately flipped out on me. Immediately. It was like, why are you posting stuff? Take that down. I don't want people in my business. So I did. And I just let it be. Well, that's not entirely true. I, st I kept pushing. I kept pushing because I didn't think that it was right for him to tell me that I couldn't post things on my own social media about my boyfriend that I had been dating for years. Like, I didn't think that was right. I understand that he wants his privacy, but like, people should know that you're dating me. Like, it's not that hard. So I did keep pushing it. On our three year anniversary, I posted a picture and it was just a little collage. I honestly think he may have only been in like one of those pictures because other pictures were like a sunset that we watched together. I tried really hard to not put him in the pictures because he didn't want to be in them because he didn't want me posting about him. So I didn't post like a bunch of pictures of us together, but there was at least one or two of us in that collage. And it just randomly disappeared. No idea. The caption literally only said three years. So like, I mean, it was very clear that it was a relationship post, but it wasn't all sappy, letting people into our lives, letting people into our business, whatever it is that he claims that he was against and why he didn't want me posting on social media, it wasn't that. But like I said, it just randomly disappeared. How could that have happened? Well, you see, he had the passcode to my phone. I was never allowed to have the passcode to his phone, but that's the next one. I don't have any proof that this is what happened, but I have a very, very strong feeling that he went into my phone and deleted that almost immediately because he didn't want other people knowing that we were in a relationship. And that's the thing is you're allowed to be a private person. You're allowed to be private about your affairs. Well, <laughs> he was not as private as about his affairs as he should be. I meant about your behaviors, about your relationship, whatever it is, you're allowed to keep things private. But there's a difference between keeping things private and keeping things secret. And there's no reason that your girlfriend of three years should be kept a secret. I did touch on this briefly in the last one, but the third big sign that Todd was cheating on me was that I was not allowed on his phone. I never knew the passcode. If I, for some reason, saw him going into his phone, his passcode would be changed within the hour, every single time. And I knew that because I tried it, because obviously I was suspicious. There are times where I did try to go through his phone or tried to get into it and I just couldn't. I wasn't allowed in his phone. I wasn't even allowed to borrow his phone to call somebody if my phone was dead. Like I would literally be like, hey, can I call my mom or call my brother or something real quick? Like I need something, my phone's dead. I don't have my phone on me, can I use yours? Which is very common in relationships. Hey, I don't have my phone, can I use yours to call somebody? He would literally have to dial the number and hand it to me and then took it back immediately if he even let me use the phone in the first place. He would give me this huge long spiel about, why can't you just use your own phone? I don't like people touching my phone. I don't like people getting into my privacy. Why are you always trying to get into my privacy? And that's what it was, is every time I even was like, hey, can I use your phone? He was like, why are you trying to get into my privacy? Why don't you trust me? And I'm just like, dude, I'm just trying to call somebody. Privacy and boundaries are very important in relationships. You should be able to keep some things to yourself. You should be able to not have your significant other go through your phone all the time. However, you also should be open to the point that like, if I need to use your phone to call somebody real quick, I should be allowed to. I have known Jake's passcode on his phone, I think since our first date. And he's just, here, here you go, there it is, have fun. Like you shouldn't feel the need to go through your significant other's phone, but they also shouldn't be hiding their phone, if that makes sense. There's a difference between having your privacy and again, keeping secrets. And for me, not having access to his phone was definitely him keeping secrets. I feel like nowadays when people are cheating or being sneaky, a lot of it has to do with technology and the phone. So our fourth big clue that Todd was cheating on me also has to do with his cell phone. And that is that he had girls calling him at weird times. Now I explained it, or at least he explained it to me. And this is how I rationalized it in my brain. He worked at a bar. He was a bouncer at a bar, which is where he found most of the women that he could cheat on me with. But that's another story. He was a bouncer at a bar. And sometimes people would call him that he worked with because they needed rides home and because they were drinking or they were out and they just know that he was a dependable guy. And that worked for a little bit until this one girl that I went to high school with, and I'm not even gonna get into that story because me and her have our own beef, but she used to call like four times and it would be at like two, three o'clock in the morning, way past when bars are closed. Like this is very clearly a booty call. 
And now, while I was around, he never answered the phone calls. So it's not like I can be like, oh, you're just trying to get a booty call right next to me. He just, he would tell me, she's probably just looking for a ride, silence it and put it to the side. I have found out since we broke up that him and that girl were actually dating or I don't know if they were in a relationship, but they were dating while we were together. So this girl was calling him at two, three, four o'clock in the morning because she thought that he was her guy because she wanted to flirt, booty call, whatever. I mean, if you are calling the man that you think that you're dating at four o'clock in the morning, that's not weird. It's very weird when his girlfriend is laying in bed next to him. I don't blame her. I, I don't like her. I don't like her for a lot of reasons, but I don't blame her for that because she probably didn't know. Because again, I wasn't allowed on social media. I wasn't allowed on his phone. None of that kind of stuff. So how would anybody know that he's in a relationship? But either way, we would get random girls calling at weird times, all the time. The last big sign that I decided to ignore that Todd was cheating on me was that I was not allowed near that bar that he worked at. Now, he didn't want me going out there ever. I was allowed to come out of, occasionally. I did go a few times because he would be a bouncer and I would get off of work around midnight. I would go, I would go to the bar, I would talk to him for a few minutes and then I'd go home. But it was always me and him in a dark corner. It was never for very long and that didn't last very long. It only happened a few times before he stopped asking me to come in. Our car situation was a little complicated. I had at one point bought a new car so he could have my old car and then he didn't want to pay for insurance. So it sat in our driveway for months and months on end. Anyways, that's a story for another time, but I had to drive him to work most of the time, but I wasn't allowed to walk in with him and I wasn't allowed to like drive up to the front of the restaurant. I literally had to like park on a side road and that's where I had to drop him off and pick him up. Anytime I would walk into the restaurant, it was immediately like, why are you here? What's going on? What's going on? Like I said, except for those few times where he let me come in like late at night where we could be in the dark and none of his other girlfriends, I guess, were watching. I don't know. But I was not allowed in his job. And anytime I went in his job, they had no idea who I was. I don't know if any of you guys have worked in restaurants before, but a lot of the time, you become like family with the people that you work with. You are with these people for hours and hours and hours on end, especially when you're a bouncer at a bar, like he was there late all the time. Now, was he there late because he was doing his job or there late because he was drinking and doing whatever he wanted with other people? I'm not sure, but it was not abnormal for your work friends to be your best friends because in the restaurant industry, that's kind of how it is. Restaurant, coworkers, we form very close bonds. So the fact that nobody that he worked with besides one person, maybe two, knew who I was, was insane to me. There are so, so many more incidences that I could tell you guys about. I thought about probably at least a dozen just while I've been sitting here talking about these five. But these are really the main five things that showed me that he was cheating on me. Again, I never caught him in the act. I never saw any weird text messages. I never saw him with another girl. But like, you were found on Tinder. I'm not allowed to post on social media. I'm not allowed on your phone. You have girls calling you at weird hours of the night and I'm not allowed to go to your work. Weird. Weird. I'm, I feel kind of dumb, not gonna lie. Looking back on this list, I'm like, how could you not know? But. I loved him and I wanted to believe him and I think that's it. It's not that I, I knew he was cheating on me. I knew he was cheating on me. I knew what he was doing. I knew he was being shady. I knew he was doing things that were wrong, which is why I had the urges to look through his phone and I had to ask him questions all the time and all of these things. But I just, I let it slide because I wanted to be loved. But that's not love. A person who loves you doesn't cheat on you constantly, doesn't lie to you all the time, doesn't make you feel crazy because they're doing sketchy things. And I deserve better. I am so glad that now I have better. I have a man who is trustworthy. But if you are in a relationship similar to what I've explained today, you deserve better. You deserve to be in a happy, loving relationship with somebody who is open, honest, and transparent with you. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. You guys have no idea how much all of your love and support 
really, really, truly means to me, especially right now because I'm still having hip pain. I'm still dealing with that, but I'll update you guys on that later. I just wanted to say thank you for all of your love and support. This is the part where I tell you, if you haven't already, to smash that like button for me, click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that way you'll always know when a new video is posted. I post videos twice a week, so you don't wanna miss any of them. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time.